Hello everyone, this is Anna with the Potomac Bee Company and today I'm going to show you how to create this bracelet using round duos and round trios. Uh, you've probably seen a lot of videos using the round duos that I have here in the bronze color um, and today I'm going to uh, use those round duos with our new bead, the round trio. Round trio has three holes running through it. Um, and so that kind of gives you uh, some more possibilities there with your design. The materials that you're going to need for this project are going to be my round trios. Mine I have here in white teal luster. My round duos that I have in white green luster. I'm going to use some drops and the drops that I'm using are Picasso Transparent Light Smoky Topaz. That's a mouthful. And then I'm also going to be using some Magic Copper 11 O's. My button for later, my cup button. Uh, I believe this one is Zinc Iris. And then when I get to doing the top, because we are going to start on the bottom, when I get to the top section here and I do this little argyle pattern down the front, I'm going to need two colors of, um, of 15 O's. I'm using Light Daffodil Ceylon and another mouthful I'm using Cranberry Lined Peridot AB, which is a really pretty color. My tools that I'm using, I always have a pair of flat nose pliers uh, that helps to thread my needle. I have size 10 needles, and then my thread that I'm using is the Wildfire in um, the thinner of the two, the .006, and I have green because that's going to blend really well with uh, the rest of my color palette here. And then I always have a pair of these little slip and snips close by for when I need to cut my thread. I've got a length of thread cut here and it is about an arm span. Uh, I always just start it with an arm span because it's easy to work with. Uh, I've got my stop bead on here and my tail of thread about six to eight inches. going to begin by making this line of round duos and round trios and connecting them the whole line of the bracelet. I'm going to pick up a round duo going to pick up three oops, pick up three eleven o's oops if they want to stay on my needle a round trio another three 11 O's. I'm going to take these beads, take my needle, I'm going to run it back through the hole that I originally ran through in my round duo so that when I give a tug and I get my tail out of the way I've got these beads connected with my three 11 O's on either side. Take my needle, run it through these three 11 O's. I'm going to cross through my round trio. And because the round trio does have three holes, you want to make sure that when you pick them up, you're picking them up on that outside hole because you'll want to make sure that you have that middle hole separate um, and save for another use. So whenever you pick them up, you're going to pick them up on that one of those outside holes. Okay, So coming out my outside hole there, I'm going to pick up a drop and I'm going to take my needle through that center hole. Pick up another drop. I'm going to take my needle back through the first hole that I went through, the first hole that I picked up my round trio with. I'm going to come through this drop on the side, come back through that center hole, and now I'm going to pick up another drop. I'm going to come this time through this outside hole that I haven't gone through yet. 
pick up another drop and go through the middle hole. So now I've added between each of my outside holes and my middle hole a drop. My thread's coming out the center hole of my round trio. I'm going to come through this drop in the front here at the front of my project. This is the front of the project for me because this is where I'm adding on to. The back of the project is where I've already been and what I've already done. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come through the front here. I'm gonna cross through this front outside hole of my round trio. And then I'm gonna need to add another 311s, pick up a round duo and add another 311s to connect back to my round trio. Picking up another 311s, pick up a round duo, and another 311s. And then I'm going to let all these beads off my needle, fall to the end, and bring my needle through this outside hole of my round trio. And I'm making a little loop. so that all those beads are snug. I'm gonna take my needle down through these 11s cross through this back hole of my round duo that I've already crossed through. I'm gonna to jump to the front here Go through this front hole that I haven't used yet. And now I'm ready to repeat the steps when I first picked up this bead for the first time, when I first started my project. I'm gonna pick up another 311s. I'm gonna pick up a round trio on one of those outside holes pick up another three 11s and then come back through that hole in my round duo same direction as I did before so I'm just making a loop give a little tug and now I've connected another round trio I'm going to repeat the steps that I did here to add those drops going to come through these 11s on the side, I'm going to cross through this hole in my round trio, the one that I've already crossed through, I'm going to pick up a drop, I'm going to come down through that center hole this time. Pick up another drop. I'm going to jump up to that back hole that I've already used. Cross through. Come through this drop. Go through the center hole. And now I'm ready to pick up another drop. Coming out the center hole of my bead of my round trio. I've picked up another drop and I'm going to jump up to that front hole of my round trio. Pick up another drop and then I'm going to come back through the center hole. And now I've got all of my drops added to my round trio. Take my needle and thread through this drop, headed towards the front of my project, headed towards the rest of my project that I still need to add, cross through 
this outside hole of my round trio. Not getting knots in my thread. And now I'm in position to add another round duo. So just like I did before, I'm going to pick up three 11s, pick up my round duo, pick up another three 11s, and I'm going to come back through the same hole that I'm coming out of in the same direction that I've already gone through it to make that loop pull tight and to pull all those beads together. Can now go through these 11s on the side. I'm going to cross through that hole in my round duo that I've already gone through. I'm going to jump to the top, the front hole. And now I'm ready to add another round trio. And we're gonna continue making these sections until we've got the bracelet the length that you need it. I've now made my bracelet about the length that I need it to go around my wrist. I'm ending with a round duo and beginning with a round duo. I've just come through the top of my round trio here, so I'm going to bring my thread through these 11s and get myself in position at the very end of my round duo. Cross through this hole, jump up and cross through that top hole. On this end, before I do the top part of my project, I'm going to add one end of my clasp. I'm going to add the loop to this end. I'm going to need my 15s now as well. So I've got my first color and my second color. On this bracelet, I did something a little bit different on my clasp uh, to kind of play up the multiple colors that I had happening um, all down the front here in this argyle pattern. So I picked up 36 beads, and I picked up that I picked them up in the pattern of a 15 and 11, and I just repeated that the whole way around. Um, so if you throw some 15s in there, you're going to need about 36 beads to make a loop that will go around a cut button. So I've got about 36 beads on now in a pattern of 15, 11, 15, 11. I'm going to bring this loop of beads around and I'm going to bring my needle and thread back through that hole in the same direction to get that loop nice and tight. Now I'm going to go back through that loop just to reinforce it because this is going to be the pro part of your project 
uh, that you could be tugging at to get your bracelet on and off. I've come through the whole whole length of my of my one end here of my loop for my cut button. I've come through that twice now. And I'm going to continue. I'm going to cross through that last hole in my round duo. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to come to this second hole here in my round duo. So I'm working towards the other end of my project here, the unfinished end. Now I'm going to start creating that argyle pattern that you can see running down this bracelet here. I have two colors of 15s. I have a lighter and a darker color. You can see here I have this pink color and actually have the same color 15 out here as I have on the sample bracelet. And so what kind of makes this argyle pattern is this crisscrossing here and having my two different colors running against each other. The only three beads that I need for this top are going to be my two colors of 15s, my lighter and my darker, and my 11. I'm going to begin by picking up three of my darker color, and then I'm going to pick up one of my 11s, and then five of my darker color. I want these beads to cross my project. Right now they're coming out, my thread is coming out, facing away from me. I want to drag that across my project diagonally and I'm going to go through the center hole of my round trio. I want to bring this needle and thread away from me. So that when I pull tight, that first line of 15s has gone from this hole, this hole right here of my round duo and connected to this hole over here diagonally of my round trio. I'm going to pick up five beads of my lighter color five beads of my lighter 15 color. And it helps for me to re to reposition my my project here as I work. So we have five beads of my lighter color now. And I'm going to come up through pass through that 11 give a good little tug. I'm going to pick up three beads of my lighter color. And now I'm going to come through the second hole in on my round duo at the top to create an X and that's going to be one little section of my argyle pattern. The next section I'm going to create right here between my round trio and my round duo. Now to get to that part of my project, instead of crossing back through my 15s, if you flip your project over, you can take a little shortcut 
And all I'm going to do is run down through these 11s and this first drop that I come to. I'm going to cross through that center hole of my round trio. Make sure everything's nice and tight. And now I'm ready to begin my next little X. While I'm coming out this side of my round trio, I'm going to come up through that first 15 there. Now I'm going to pick up four of my lighter 15s, an 11 out, and then three of my lighter color 15s. I want these beads to follow the same line as my other line of lighter colored beads. So I want these beads to come from my center of my round trio to this first hole that I come to in my round duo. And I'm crossing from this side of my project to the next. So I'm crossing from the side of the project that's facing me to the side that's facing away from me. Or from the right to the left, however you want to think about it. Give it a tug. And now I'm going to pick up three beads of my light, or, or I'm sorry, of my darker color 15s. So three of my darker color 15s. I'm going to pass through that 11 in the middle of my 15s. And then to complete this X, I need to pick up four of my darker color 15s. And I'm gonna bring my needle through this 15 closest to the hole in my round trio in the center there. Give a tug and continue through that center hole of your round trio. And that is the first little section of Argyle completed. I'm now gonna move on to my round duo. And again, I'm gonna take a little shortcut here. My thread is coming out the center hole of my round trio. I'm gonna move forward in my project. I'm gonna go through this drop. And I'm gonna go through these next 11 O's. cross through the first hole of that round duo that I come to. And on the right side of my project here, I want to cross down to that next hole of my round duo, working towards the end of my project. And now I'm ready to start all over. So I'm gonna pick up three of my lighter color 15s, an 11, and now five of my lighter color 15s. These beads are gonna cross diagonally across my project Come through that center hole of my round trio. Oops. Be careful not to get caught on your drops. That is very easy to do. And now I'm going to pick up my darker color. I'm going to pick up five of the darker color 15s. bring these, bring my needle through that 11, and 
And now to finish that little X, I need three of my darker color 15s. And I'm gonna come through this closest hole of my round duo to complete that little X. Flip my project over and again do my little shortcut. So I'm coming out this hole of my round duo. I'm going to go through these 11s and a drop. Cross through that center hole of my round duo or my round trio. And now because I already have some 15s here next to the hole, I'm going to come up through just one of those. And I come up through one of these so that I don't have another 15 trying to um, kind of vie for space there. Otherwise it's going to get kind of crowded. So I use that first 15 that I've already added, that I've already put there. Come through that one. And now I'm ready to do a diagonal of my darker color. So I only need four this time because I'm using one of those 15s that I picked up by the hole. So I need four of my darker and I do need an 11 and then three of my darker. These are going to cross over, come through that hole in my round duo that's closest, and now I need to do a diagonal in my lighter color. I'm going to pick up three of my lighter. I'm going to come through that center 11 and I'm going to pick up another four of my lighter. And then bring my needle through this 15 here closest to the hole, to the center hole of my round trio. I'm gonna share that one bead, and then I'm gonna come through that center hole. Flip my project over, and move forward using that little shortcut through a drop and three 11 O's always working down towards the unfinished part of my project. We can flip this over, cross through my round duo, cross through it twice, and now I'm in position to repeat this step until I've gone all the way down and I have that argyle pattern down the entire length of my bracelet. I've now come the whole length of my bracelet, adding my argyle pattern to the top of each one of these sections. I've cut off my extra thread, and now the only thread that I have left is this tail that I left at the beginning. I'm going to take off my stop bead, and I'm going to squish the end of this thread here to get it to go through my needle really easily. And now, very last step is just to add my button to the end. To do this, I want to be coming out this very, very last hole of my project, this hole at the very end of my round duo. And I'm gonna repeat the pattern I did here on the loop. I'm gonna pick up a 
couple of 11s and 15s on each side in that same pattern. So 11 and a 15, 11, 15, and I'm gonna end with an 11. So I'm gonna begin and end with one of those 11s. Let that fall down to my round duo. I'm gonna pick up my button and I'm gonna pick it up, approach it from the underneath so that when it comes down to my project, you can see the concave side facing up. I'm gonna pick up a 15, an 11, and a 15. Come back down my, through my button. And I'm just gonna do the mirror image on this side. Pick up an 11, a 15, an 11, a 15, and another 11. And come through the whole of my round duo again. I'm gonna run back through all of these beads that I just added. And that'll just help me keep my keep my thread here really tight. It'll help me get it really tight up against the project and I'll just reinforce this end of my thread or this end of my project here where it's going to get a lot of wear and tear. going to make a couple knots throughout my project as I go. Making sure to tighten, tighten this up. And I'm going to do one more little knot here. Come back through a couple of my beads just to help hide the end of my thread. Get a close cut with my scissors, my little slip and snips. And that's it. That is the end of the project. Uh, the only other thing that I can do is add a little bit of glue wherever I have an end to my thread. So this is the finished product here. Um, this is the one that we were using as our sample. And then one last thing I wanna show you before uh, we end here is this is also one more take on this bracelet. Um, here we have this Argyle pattern where we were doing two different colors of 15s. Here we have just one color of 15. Um, so it's not exactly Argyle, but it's the same pattern. And just something to sort of switch it up for you. Um, and give you some new ideas of how you can play with this. Thanks, hope you guys have fun making the bracelet.